Sarah Valdez, Education Coordinator with the Edwards Aquifer Authority. And I'm John Credit, Geologist with the Edwards Aquifer Authority. And today we're going to show you a little activity that we've done with our students here at the Edwards Aquifer Authority. A little something simple that you can do with your students. We're testing for a limestone rock. Um, I've gone ahead and gathered three different rocks here. But you can make this part of your activity. You can make the rock hunt part of your lesson. So you can take your students outside, find three rocks, bring them back in. Um, and once you've brought them in, you label them A, B, and C. And this is a pretty simple test. What we're going to be looking for is a chemical reaction. And this is a great place to stop and talk to your students about the difference between chemical reactions and physical reactions. Um, <clears throat> a chemical reaction is what we're looking for here. Um, and we're going to be using a hydrochloric acid, a very weak acid. Um, but you can use pretty much anything that's uh, slightly acidic. So we're also going to try vinegar, and a lot of people have vinegar at home, so it should be something easy that you can find. Um, we also wanted to show a little bit of a chemical, the chemical reaction that we're going to be looking for by using just this baking soda and vinegar. So let me go ahead and show, if you haven't done this before, it's kind of a pretty cool reaction. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but... It's the one there. that's used for making your volcanoes add a little color to it and you can... Yeah. So, with my four-year-old at home, my five-year-old, um, we can talk here just a bit about solids, liquids, and gases. You know, I've got a solid, I'm adding a liquid, we're creating a gas. Um, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be testing the limestone. So I can show you here, too, what we're going to be looking for. So if I take a little bit of the vinegar and I cover, I've got this is limestone rock here. So you're going to see what the end result should be. Now the vinegar is uh, pretty weak, which you get in the grocery store is going to be probably no more than like a 6% acidity. But if you have indeed have limestone rock, you can see the rock starts to fizz. There's lots of bubbling going on. But let's get back to these rocks, A, B, and C. We created a worksheet that we like to use with our students, um, and we've actually got two different versions. The first one um, just has sample A, sample B, sample C, length, description, and whether or not there was a reaction. Um, with younger students, you're really just looking at physical properties, and this is a great way, uh, place to talk to your students about physical properties, too. What color is it? Um, you can weigh it. You can measure it. You can describe it, um, either, either using words. Um, if you're working on writing, you can describe it, or you can draw it. You can sketch it out. Some students are not comfortable um, writing yet, but they can draw a picture of the rock. So they're using the rock. They're looking at it. Um, for our high school students, if you wanted to go up a level higher, we've broken the worksheet down. And you can find these worksheets on our Pinterest page. Um, so for like a high school student that wants to get a little bit more in-depth on geology, you would look at color composition, grain size, grain shape, grain pattern. So before you test the rock, we're actually really taking a look at the rock. And you can use a magnifying lens or a mag microscope if you want to get a closer look. OK, so we're going to go ahead and get on with the testing. I've got a bottle of hydrochloric acid. And um, anytime you're working with an acid like this, you should always use proper equipment. So I've got some goggles and I've got some gloves. And then if you're working with something like the vinegar, there's not really a need, but it is a good lesson to use for all students' lab, um, lab safety. So I'll put on my goggles, I'll put on my gloves. And I'm going to take a couple of drops, and I'm going to add them to A. And you can have your students talk also about um, hypotheses, what they think is going to happen based on what they already know. So I'm going to take a couple of drops of the hydrochloric acid, I'm going to put it on A. And you're going to notice that there's really nothing going on there. No reaction. So on the worksheet, we under reaction, we could put, we would just put N for no. Um, <clears throat> I can take B, and I can put the acid on there. You can see that it's already effervescing. And we'll try it with C. 
and you'll see that there's nothing really happening. It's A, it looks like it absorbed it a little bit. B, started effervescing. And C, is just sitting right on top. So based on what you were looking at now, you can tell that your limestone is going to be B. So since we're done with that part, I'll go ahead and take off my gloves and take off my goggles. And we can talk a little bit about why it is that the um, limestone reacted with the, the acid. Um, the Edwards Aquifer is made out of limestone rock. And we've got a big piece of limestone rock here. And limestone rock, the first thing you notice about limestone rock is, uh, especially a piece like this, is that it has a lot of holes. Some of them are microscopic, tiny little pores that you can barely even see through. Some of them are big big holes in the rock that you can walk into, like what we're standing in right now. Hey. <laughs> so the Edwards Aquifer is made out of limestone rock. Um, why are we, why does it fizz whenever there is acid on it? Don, would you like to explain? <laughs> oh, thank you. So the limestone is a calcium carbonate, and on the pH scale, calcium carbonate with water is a 7, and you go from 1 to 14, water being a 7, the limestone is over about a, a 9. Whenever you put uh, an acid on it, a vinegar, a hydrochloric, a carbonic acid, the acids are over on the uh, 3 and 4 side. Uh, vinegar is just an, almost a 3, a 2.8 or so. So the reaction between the acid of the vinegar and the calcium carbonate of the limestone will cause the limestone to start to dissolve and it goes into a uh, um, gas. And in this case, it's uh, carbon dioxide gas, which is making all the bubbles in here. And it's dissolving parts of that rock away. And that's what has caused the holes to form in the limestone, which allows the, more water to pass through the limestone and it causes it to d dissolve even more. So the continuous loop here as the holes get bigger, more water goes in, allowing more water to dissolve more rock. And you end up with a porous rock that makes a great aquifer. See, a long, long time ago, most of Texas used to be covered by ocean. And what kind of things live in the ocean? Shells, fish, things with hard parts, and those hard parts, when they, when those animals die, their hard parts, their shells, bones, go down to the bottom of the ocean and they get embedded down into the mud. And we've got a rock here that's covered in shells and fossils, and so that stuff gets squished under all the weight of all the water pushing down on top of it, um, under that ocean. And that rock, as those shells get down and get compressed into the limestone, uh, down into the mud, become limestone rock. So, <clears throat> the ocean recedes, and the land shifts, we've got cracks, fault lines, sinkholes, um, and as the water falls down, rain starts to come down and it becomes more and more acidic as it gets through the atmosphere and through the ground and down into this rock. And as it gets down to the rock, it starts to wear it away and it starts to eat away at the rock. So why is limestone the only rock that, why didn't the other two rocks react? Well, the limestone is a calcium carbonate. It's made of dead stuff. Yeah, it's made of seashells. So the seashells have been taking that calcium carbonate, like our bones are made out of, out of their environment, building their seashells out of it. And so the seashells got all crunched up, meshed down, like Sarah said, made into limestone. Um, I know that this rock is actually a chert, or a flint, people call it both, but it's a silicate. Instead of a calcium carbonate, this is a silicate, so it won't react with acid. Um, also what we have in the Edwards and below the Edwards, the Edwards limestone is the uh, uh, another formation. It has a lot of dolomite in it. The dolomite is a calcium manganese, magnesium uh, carbonate and it won't react with limestone. I mean with uh, acid like limestone does. But it looks just like limestone. So if someone brings something that looks just like a limestone and the acid doesn't react with it, it's a dolomite. And that third one? Third one is a sandstone. And uh, the sandstone, if, with the uh, hand lens, you can look at it and you can actually see the grains of sand in it that have uh, made up this, this one. 
The other ones you'll look at it and you'll see facies of uh, crystals in it from the calcium carbonate, where this one you'll actually see grains of sand that are in it. So there's a lot of really cool lessons, a lot of different things that you can learn just by testing a rock to see what, if it's going to react or not. Talk about pH scale for a second. Oh. So on, uh, on the internet you can go on, you can find pH scales that relate to food items so that the kids can understand that, you know, vinegar, tomatoes, uh, citrus fruit, over to uh, ammonia, uh, soaps, and there's different kinds, you know, there's lots of different uh, pH scales that are out there that show household uh, items, you know, Coca-Cola versus baking soda. One thing I don't like about these is you talk about how the pH increases, but they're usually a horizontal pH scale. And one thing you know I like is talking about how pH increases is actually making it a vertical, where you have water, you have the basic and the acidics on both sides of the, of the water, and um, you know a, a basic is a, like hair conditioner, dishwashing soap, uh, baking soda, of course. Acidic would be citric acid, vinegar, battery acid, sulfuric acid. And if you want to make a very fun indicator for uh, acid and base, you can take some red cabbage, grind it up, boil it in some water, and get that red pinkish juice and use that as an indicator for acids and bases. And just a warning, it smells pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cheap and it's easy. Um, again, we looked at physical properties, we looked at um, physical reactions, chemical reactions, we looked at um, geology, um, and solids, liquids, gases, uh, lab safety. There's a lot that you can actually do with this lesson. You can make it as long as you want, you can make it as short as you want, you can do it for five-year-olds, you can do it for college students. Um, so it's up to you, however you want to use it. It's a lot of fun and it's a really easy thing to do. So if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, uh, send us an email, uh, send us some pictures. We'd love to see how you use this lesson with your students. Uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you soon.